but I'm all for people converting. I think everybody should be Jewish because everybody should love Hashem as much as I do. No. <laughs> well, I think that because we have to share this planet with people, that if people had a higher standard of living and behavior, then the world would improve for everybody. I mean, the notion of loving your neighbor as yourself, fighting evil, this is something we have to encourage. We have to encourage goodness. And if you're telling people they can live by seven laws, it's like you're telling them they could be less ethical than a Christian and a Muslim who clearly live by more laws than seven. Well, see, when I talk to the Noahides, I just take it as a stepping stone, like they're dipping their toe in and they'll want to become Jewish. If they love Hashem like they say they do, there's no way they would just settle to be Noahides. Do you know they want to be no Jewish. 99.9% .9 of them already want to be Jewish, but they can't because they live in the middle of nowhere. So this is why I started this conversion program, just so they could start their own community. Convert with me for free. Start your own community. Also, it's easier to upgrade a conversion than to convert from scratch. If a rabbi already sees that you have an Orthodox conversion that's not recognized by everyone, they'll be like, okay, I'll just sign it and put the stamp on it. You're clearly, we can't treat you like a Gentile. You're a Suffolk Jew. That means it's questionable, like if you're a Gentile. Can you so, like they say about me, because my generation goes back so far, they say that some say that I need to go through this special conversion process and others say I don't. So what? So are you? So would you say that you're, this this stunt that you're pulling here, Rabbi, with free conversions, is more to say about getting people starting their own communities than nece not necessarily the overpriced ten thousand dollar conversions that Rabbi Your Reuven is charging over there in Miami? I think the ideal is to move into a Jewish community. There's no point in being Jewish alone. There's just no point. Making this world a better place is a team effort, and that's the whole point of Israel. Like-minded individuals. Moving in a certain direction, sensitizing the world. Okay? And spreading that throughout, yeah. Yeah, you know, so like if you're going to be alone, there's no point. I mean, I've been performing free conversions for 13 years already. It's not anything new. I just started up again now. The goal is to move into a Jewish community and get the most recognized conversion, even though that conversion will take two or three years. Okay, I'm not as pissed off that it takes that long than I am with synagogues who don't believe in conversions and annul conversions and make it impossible. Okay. As long as there's a program, I'm happy. Uh, See, but, and I like I like the fact that it takes longer because you have to live with the community. You have to become a part of the community. You have to learn the ways of the Jewish people. You yeah. have to, you no, know, but there's that, a double standard okay. being that you could be born Jewish and then this baby just gets in. Why? Because his mother happens to be Jewish and you have to convert. It's really a double standard. See, and I feel like I'm converting because I didn't grow up Jewish. So going through this whole process with my husband has been really good for me because I'm learning the ways. I'm learning how to sit at the table and eat with everyone. Do you get that? Just because I was born Jew doesn't mean I know anything about being a Jew. No, I know, but there's many born Jews who it could be their first day in a synagogue and they'll give him an aliyah. It takes a convert maybe two or three years before he gets to that. So conversion was meant to take a day. Why? Because learning Judaism is a life process. It's not something that you do for a year, two years, and then convert. So when Israel said Nasev and Ishma, it's because they were taking everything on and they haven't received the Torah yet. As a matter of fact, the whole Torah wasn't given on Mount Sinai. It was I a progression that, yeah. all the way through Deuteronomy. They accepted the covenant even before knowing what was inside what the covenant. Was. <laughs> yeah, you know, so this notion that you have to know as much as the rabbi to convert is stupid. And it sounds like there's some resentment here by Jews against Gentiles, and this is why they're doing it. So they're like, oh, now you're coming to us after you've been torturing us for so many years. Now we're going to make you suffer. Right. See, I'm it, just glad I didn't, I didn't have rabbis like that that were like the, they, I didn't get that treatment. Like I, I didn't see that. I, I know what well, you're you were born about Jew. Because if you were completely Gentile, look, you're a white woman. If you were a black Asian or Samoan looking woman or something, it would be harder for you to just walk in somewhere and say I'm Jewish. I'm telling you, even though I don't believe that some people are intrinsically superior to other people. There are people who are born with better means, whether they have more money. I was lucky to have always lived in a Jewish community. I mean, I was born in Passaic, New Jersey. I grew up in Miami Beach. There's tons of Jews everywhere. Now, there's people who live in Montana and Idaho. Who, Utah. Right, or Utah, who love Torah even more than I do, and they have nothing nearby. Circumstances aren't always equal. It's a shame. I've always that, agreed with you on, on, on the whole freaking process of, of conversion. I've always said it's been too hard and too harsh in some situations. You know, so I, I agree with all of that. And it's because I've actually got a taste of it with going through it with, you know, and on a personal level, I can see what, and I have seen how I sometimes get treated differently than other people because I have a blood link. Does that make sense? And I don't like that. Absolutely. 
Yeah, I, mean, I, I never liked being uh, from the outside coming in because every decision, every every action I made, everything I said, every word I used was always criticized to the tenth degree. There were people in the shul that would, you know, eat hummets on Pesach and drive and walk in and get an aliyah right to the to the Torah. And if I, God forbid, you know, sneezed the wrong way, oh. He's Aaron Rav. He's a fake Jew. He's not a real convert. He's not sincere. So it's like, why is that? I never understood. I never understood about Judaism that way. Like, why am I coming? Because I'm coming from the outside, criticized with every slight move I make. But someone who's born Jewish, well, it doesn't really matter. They're accepted no matter what. I, I just don't get that. Yeah, I don't understand that either. And this is something that needs to be brought to light. And I don't know what I know that when, when you know things are supposed to change when the the Mashiach comes and everybody you know everybody's going to be taught the correct way of doing it. I don't know what we're supposed to do until then. All I all I know is that we're supposed to do the very best that we can do. We've been provided the Torah, and as long as we stick with that, we can't go wrong, right? Those of you who may agree with my stance on conversions, everything else I teach harmonizes with this idea. It all connects. Now, when you guys hear me debate a rabbi and we're talking about Kabbalah or Halacha, it all ties down to how Jews are viewed by the outside world and how Jews treat outsiders. If you belong to a system that elevates people because of blood or because they have some sort of superior soul, it's going to affect how you view the outside world. You start separating the world between Jew and Gentile instead of between the decent and the indecent, which is well, how I think the Torah separates the world. I, I dig it. Kind of the reason why I like the Bel Shem Tov. Like, yeah. I really dig the Bel Shem Tov because he, he preached that, you know, the common everyday person was someone to be admired, that they could, you know, be a part of the world and, and do everyday mundane activities. Only still, Jews. The Bel Shem Tov taught that born Jews who were peasants should be proud of the fact that they have a Jewish soul because they didn't even believe in God or they didn't know anything. Ultimately, the Baal Shem Tov's message was unethical and twisted because it pushed this whole notion that Gentiles are garbage intrinsically. Clearly, there's Gentiles who are garbage. There's Jews who are garbage, right? But there are Gentiles who are beautiful and there are Jews who are beautiful. It's our deeds that distinguish us. In the beginning, I thought Chabad also. I didn't start off with Chabad. I started off in a Sephardi synagogue and then I moved to a young Israel and I never really was involved with Chabad, but I admired how they did outreach in the beginning. And I even considered becoming a Chabadnik till I realized how they viewed anyone who wasn't ethnically Jewish. Everyone does some good. This notion that everyone does only bad is silly. Clearly, a broken clock is right twice a day. Many people, under the guise of mysticism and spirituality and love and peace, they come into Hasidut only to realize that it's very anti-Gentile. I I can't argue there. I, I Habad is uh, as much as they're uh, like I was uh, ranting and raving early about being anti-reform. As much as they hate reform Jews, they they don't like the the goyim either. <laughs> yeah. It's not bad to be anti-Gentile in Talmudic times or in Torah times when Gentiles behaved like cavemen. But nowadays. But the rabbis acknowledged that the idolatry after the destruction of the Second Temple was different than the idolatry before, especially nowadays that it's a Judaized form of idolatry. Islam comes from Christianity and Judaism, and Christianity comes from Judaism. So it's not completely ethically foreign. So to but call, it is a man-made religion, and they do <coughs> worship a man over, or, over God. Do you know no, what I mean? Yeah, but we're talking about ethics. We're not talking okay. about ceremonial the reason Christians are ethical is because they follow someone who claims to keep Torah. I mean, JC didn't introduce new ethical laws. He introduced new theological concepts, but not ethics. He didn't say you could murder on Tuesday and rape on Wednesday. That's it all right. came from the Torah. Now, for sure, in terms of theology, it's different. If you believe that, that all the ceremonial laws in the Torah were done away with, it's for sure a different religion, just like Islam's different. But what makes Islam ethical, it's not completely ethical, but what makes it ethical, it's that it came from Judaism. It has that ethical base to it. This is why Muslims could walk around thinking that the Quran is such a great moral and ethical guide because it has those biblical roots to it. Instead of someone who followed Mithra or Moloch or Dagon or Baal Peor, that 
those but then gods, they also dismiss Torah. Who? The the Muslims they miss they say that it wasn't Isaac, it was all right Ishmael and yeah. Well, for sure, it's an idolatrous religion because of that, because it says the Torah is erroneous and the Torah is put done away with. But what it means by that is that the narrative in the Torah has been changed. That's what the Quran teaches. Same thing that the the Christians teach. The narrative changed. Narrative, but not the ethics. The yeah. ethics remains the same in terms of. Who Abraham sacrificed, I don't think that makes someone a less or more ethical person. I don't, right? but it says that the Torah is lying. Does that make sense? That's what makes it unethical is they're saying that the word of God is not true. I mean, I think that's what makes it idolatrous. If they believe that these commandments, like keeping Shabbat, keeping Yom Kippur, keeping all this, do not apply, that makes it an idolatrous religion in terms of what we consider Avodah Zarah. It's foreign to what the Torah teaches. But the ethics... I don't think any Muslim would say that there's anything in the Torah taught that's unethical. They'll build on it, but they'll say the ethics is the base. But the average Christian who teaches that they don't go by works but by faith actually right. accepts every ethical command in the Torah. I always laugh at them over that because they, they, they sit there and they fight against sin, like being gay or killing babies and doing this and that and the other. But then they say that they don't believe in sin, they believe in faith, but yet they try to keep the commandments and laws and they don't even realize what they're doing. So works for them is only ceremonial laws, not ethical laws. So they believe ethical laws are commanded on every Christian, that they're never going to acknowledge that it's okay to dishonor your parents or to not love your neighbor as yourself, every ethical law they accept, but they make a distinction between ceremonial law and ethical laws. And ceremonial laws is what they call works. So when they say that they're not saved by works, what they're saying is that they're not saved by ceremonial laws, but just laws that make you more Christ-like, i.e. ethical. So they're basically saying they're anti-rabbinical Judaism when they say that. It's not anti-just rabbinic, it's anti-Torah, because like not yeah. eating chametz on Pesach is not an ethical command, it's a ceremonial command, that we have to keep it. So Judaism like splits it up between hukim and mishpatim. So hukim are commandments between man and uh, God, yeah. and mishpatim are commandments between man and man. Also, they say mishpatim are commandments that make sense. They have to be logical. While a chok, like putting on to fill in the ashes of the red heifer, these things don't make sense to us. We do them because God tells us to do it. Even dietary laws, they're not so clear cut. I mean, if you see how Jews eat, you know, all the greasy crap they eat now, you know, with latkes and hamantashen and all this stuff, it's not necessarily for health. It's ultimately because God told you to do it. This is why we do it. But I think it takes a more sophisticated approach to religion to be able to make these distinctions. So do you think this is where Kabbalah and Hasidu come in? They fill that void? They try to, they try to explain the unexplainable. Right, they try sure. to make sense of the nonsensical. So there's nothing wrong with doing that as long as you continuously say, this is my opinion. This is what I think. But their big mistake is that they'll say the Torah teaches and they'll quote a Kabbalistic idea. Well, when I use science, like when I get into Torah and science, like when you were talking about the eatery laws, I always look at the animals that we're not supposed to eat, the meat, like the filter animals, like the things that clean up the earth and they're, you know, they're, they, they take all that crap into your body that you wouldn't want to put in there. They spread disease. They're, they're just kind of gross animals, like the rats and the bugs and the pigs and it, pigs can't even look up at heaven. But it, when you take that and you take it as scientific, that would, and then you go into Kabbalah, they kind of try to get into that whole depth of why you wouldn't want to eat pig or why you wouldn't want to eat shellfish or do you know what I mean? Yeah. You no, know, it's not a bad thing. From a devotional perspective, it's fine. But they try to get their ideas canonized with the pen of divine inspiration. They'll say that Torah teaches, not just to say that it's my idea, but now my idea is sanctioned by God. And if you happen to disagree with my idea, you're disagreeing with God. So this is why. They're quick to throw you under the bus if you disagree with the Kabbalistic concept. Instead of saying, you know what, this is just a good idea. Why shouldn't that be enough? The primitive mind doesn't want to keep anything unless that thing comes from God. All right? No, I mean, something could be a good idea and not necessarily sanctioned or directly by God. And it's good that you should keep it. This is why. Well, aren't we taught that a wise person learns from everyone? And we're always taught that the nations, you know, they produce, they, they're not the stupid. They, they have good ideas. They have wisdom. They have knowledge amongst them. We're not taught to ignore the world just because they're not Jewish. I mean, I don't know what you mean by we are taught. I mean, most Orthodox Jews are not taught that. Oh, well, I wasn't and taught that. Most Orthodox Jews believe that you can't trust anyone who's not Jewish. And even if a Christian has a positive, like, a positive spin on a Torah concept, 
that can even be included as a commentary or as an idea in a Jewish book. I remember the Sincino at Pertz Chumash has Gentile comments in its Chumash that when I closed my synagogue, I donated like 50 of these Chumashim to a synagogue. And then I went back the next day and they were all in the garbage. And then I said, like, how can you throw a Chumash in the garbage? He's, he opened up the book and this is in a Hertz Chumash. I believe it's Hertz or Sincino. And it said that there are ideas in here by people who may not be considered Jewish or something like that. And then their opinion to this, that this means that this has been tainted by Christians and has to be destroyed. Kind of like the way we pray. We, we no longer, we have to pray a certain way because we didn't want to take on the idolistic ways of how certain nations were praying. So now we don't raise our hands up to the air when we, yeah, I get all that. This is wrong. <laughs> There's no halacha that says, first of all, the notion of writing No, no, I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying I understand what you're talking about because I've heard right. it talked about or discussed before about why we don't do certain things. Right. Yeah. So I have a video explaining how Jews used to prostrate when they pray. And this appears in the Talmud. It appears in the Mishnah. It appears in Mishnah Torah by the Rambam. That prostration is a form of Jewish prayer. And Jews only stopped doing it because they wanted to be different from the Muslims. I mean, mainly by the Ashkenazim. Because in Sephardi countries, before the state of Israel, before they were all absorbed in the state of Israel, many of them also still prostrated, just like Muslims prostrate. And this is an excuse that the average rabbi would give on why we don't prostrate nowadays after you show them in the Rambam and in the Talmud that people used to prostrate. Because they'll say that because the Muslims took it on, we stopped doing it. Of course, this is not an authoritative statement. He's just kind of like regurgitating what he heard. Because we're not supposed to alter and modify a Torah or a Torah lifestyle just because a Gentile adopts that idea. So for example, most Christians are pro-life and most Jews are pro-choice. Not this one. But does that mean that we can't march alongside a Christian when they're making the right choice when they're... I do all the time. If yeah, they're pro-life, right. I, I write there with them helping them promote that. So most Orthodox Jews will not because of that, unfortunately. You are always supposed to support good. Yeah. How can you how can you increase good in the world if you're not increasing good in the world? Just goes under the whole long bucket list of mine that uh, shake my finger towards uh, you know the Orthodox community. That's all I'm saying. I mean, I'm not to rag on them. I'm just I'm just saying it. Just I can't rag on them because yeah. the, the the ones that I have been around have not taught me the things that I'm learning tonight. The, this is not the way that I was taught to think. It was not the things. It's not what I've been taught personally. This is but, common. Like I, okay. I gone for six years to a to a Chabad shul, and what they say is a lot worse than what Rabbi Rabbi is actually being politically correct tonight. I mean, let me just put it to you that way. The Jewish people are still my people, and I think yeah, I love the Jewish people. I get really upset when we talk bad about them, even when they're in the wrong. I know they need to be corrected, but I don't feel like they should publicly be shamed. Does that make sense? I encourage people to be Jewish. You know, so I believe in Torah. But I do hold them to a higher standard. And I have so does this, Hashem. So I have this infatuation with truth and being honest about things. And this makes me many times stand up for Christians when they're being unjustly ridiculed and stuff like that. It's, I don't think that we should ridicule people unless we give them the right tools to make correct decisions. Right? I mean, it's not fun to make fun of a Christian just because he has titses around his belt loops when he doesn't know any better. He admires you, you dummy. Can you see he's trying to be like you and you're going to make like fun of him? Kid, yeah, it's like when your kid puts on your cowboy boots and they go up to his knees. Do you ridicule him or do you take pictures of him? And, mm -hmm. you know, do you know what I, I get what you're saying? We should have love for everybody. Hashem loves everybody. He doesn't want to destroy anybody. You know, I read that all the time. They, he really doesn't. He wants to take vengeance on the people that have done harm to his people and done great evils in this world. But he really doesn't want to destroy his creations. We should not rejoice in that thought at all. I just want to say for the record, I do love Israel and the Jewish people. <laughs> <laughs> we have a commandment of tochacha. So tochacha means rebuke. Also to give musr. And that's really what this is. Like we're rebuking them just so they can do better. Just because there is such potential in the Jewish world. The only reason that we have Muslims and Christians still around this today is because Jews have chosen not to proselytize. If the Orthodox world would get off their butt, and actually start spreading Judaism, it would be an unstoppable force. Okay. It was in Rome. They had to legalize it because so many people were converting mm. to Judaism. That's it. It was Emperor Hadrian who put a ban on, on proselytizing because of that. Think about yeah. it. I've debated, 
I don't know, over 200 people, probably 50 of them were rabbis. And I'm a nobody. So imagine if real big rabbis did the same thing. You know how many people would convert to Judaism? It's like an unstoppable force. It's, it's just like a sleeping giant. This is why I'm trying to wake them up and say, come on, let's do it. Join the cause. I just want to say real quick, your message is getting out there. I think Rabbi Draw is actually listening to these broadcasts and, and your channel and everything because he did a phenomenal show last night. And I was like, am I listening to a Rabbi Asher speech here? What's going on? I mean, he's basically saying what you're saying. Like, yeah, the non-Jew Christian, they're just throwing away these, these ceremonial laws. Yeah, they might believe in a false Messiah, but they're, you know, they're good ethnical people that believe in, in, in the laws of Israel. And they're part of us. I mean, that's basically the message that he's saying. So him and, and I chat, by the way, on Facebook, like privately. And I've been trying to interview him for a while, but I don't know. I guess. Uh, you like him? Do you think he's a cool dude? Or I think or? he's, I don't agree with him in every, I mean, he's like a breast lover guy. I mean, I'm not into cabal and stuff like that, but I think he has a big heart. And out of all the social media rabbis in that world, I mean, apart from the halachic guys, He's my favorite or from the Musser guys, just because he talks to you on your level and he's not talking down to you. And it just seems like he cares. Like he's there like a friend. This is why like I think he's just like a sweet, very sweet person. And I like that approach. Unlike the other guys, 